Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2024 Ford Ranger Super Crew four-wheel drive in the Lariat trim level. This vehicle does have some optional equipment added to the Lariat trim, so you can see the window sticker at the end of the video. This vehicle sitting on 255-65 Goodyear tires. Now these are upgrades. Wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels with a matte black finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Iconic Silver Metallic. And it's basically just a nice silver color. I guess Iconic is a good name for it. Uh, so here in the front, it has the Ford emblem right here and it has a camera just below it and it has a little sprayer to spray it. And almost all the grill is a matte black, except for this portion right here, and it's like a gloss gray. You also have it down here, and the silver there at the bottom. There's parking sensors across the front. Radar adaptive cruise control sensor is right in this area. There's also parking sensors here on the side as well, here and there on the edge. They do a really good job of detecting things around the vehicle. There's also a recovery hook. There's two of them right here. There and there on that side. Now the headlights are, they're, they're pretty good. You gotta check out my night video. Uh, so you have low and high beams here, separate projectors, LEDs. Um, they're, they're, they have the motion left and right with the steering. They also have auto, auto leveling. There's a cornering light right here. And then there's fog lights here as well. All LED. And that's one of the best things about this vehicle is the headlights. There's a lot of really, really, in the night video, you'll see a lot of really good stuff and a lot of really, you know, stuff that needs to be improved. So it's like a huge disparity. Looking at the profile, it, it does, you can see it has the steps here. And for me, they just kind of get in the way. So, of course, they're optional. You can have them on or not. And it has a little camera here on the side mirror. And it is body colored up a portion of the side mirror. This is a matte black pillar, which kind of solidifies the glass a little bit. I really like those rugged tires and wheels looking really good on this type of vehicle. And that's a big vehicle. The, the Ford Ranger over the years has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity system. You can remote start it, lock, lock, unlock. There's a panic button here, but it's pretty much the same Ford key that they've used for a while now. There's a physical key on the inside as well. I also have a video showing you how to change the battery on one of these keys on my channel. But yeah, you can remote start it. I like the way you can just remote remote start really fast you know hit the lock button double tap that it immediately starts right up there's no pausing waiting did i press the button good enough is did it get the signal it just immediately starts up i really like that now you just press that and hold it to turn it off so it's the type of system where you lock the doors by putting your finger over the sensor right here that little dimple indicates it uh, it has the automatic folding side mirrors turned on and then to unlock it, you put your hand behind the handle. It senses your hand position, unlocks the door. You also have a little key code right here as well if you need to use that. And there's a physical key location here on the driver's side only. The inside of the passenger door is mostly soft touch. So you can soft touch here. All this is like a vinyl type material, very soft. All the way up here into the front, you have that gloss gray finish there. And then a little metallic accent, contrast touching here and here more of that metallic accent now the handle is not enclosed so you can't utilize this as a pocket it's basically you just pull that right there to open the door so that you can grab it but it's not really usable in any other way uh, and then you have the large pocket there at the bottom it's kind of limited it has the hard touch surfaces down here here's the threshold and here is the seat now it's a power seat and it goes up and down here for the passenger tilt the back and then you of course you can go forward and back then a two-way lumbar adjustment as well and it has a leather trimmed heated seats up here and you can see the leathers here and then the cloth is here where it meets up with the hard plastic it has the contrast stitching uh, really nice looking seats there's no perforations or anything but it has a cool little design here they do get hot in the sun when they're in the direct sunlight which pretty much any black seat does that all right, there's the leg room, which is fantastic here in the front. Uh, this is a hard touch surface, locking glove compartment, flops open uh, and has a smooth plastic on the inside. Pretty standard size, pretty decent. There's a little storage cubby right here, which is excellent. I like the little, little shelf type 
things like this. And there's also a secret compartment here. So this is pretty good size. Um, so it goes in there quite a ways. See how far it goes in there? So you can put some stuff in there. I like the way it's kind of hidden out of the way. It does have the handle for entering the vehicle. Entering the vehicle. Uh, this is more of that like soft touch vinyl type material. And then up here you have the hard touch, non-reflective surface. You can see the front door has a nice swing. There's lots of room here in the front to get in and out. Uh, now the back door has lots of room, but the swing of the door could be a little bit wider. I think I know why they didn't do that because it's not really too necessary because uh, you can't really use this for cargo area. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. So we have hard touch surfaces up here and here. And then in the middle is the soft touch vinyl type material. You have the pockets at the bottom and the same handle style back here as well. So it's basically a bench seat back here. It does have the latch system for the car seats and you just have to move away. There's a little space right there to access um, the latch system. There is an armrest that folds down and it locks in place. You can see this little strap right here. Uh, it actually won't come down unless you pull that strap. So it's secure, which is, I like that. So it has this little catch right there. A lot of vehicles just have it to where it's just flopping down. Uh, there's cup holders, armrest, nice and soft, and this is rubberized on the inside of the cup holders. The back of both front seats has a mat pocket. Right in here, all felt lined there as well, nice and tight. And then there is a little storage cubby there, USB-A, USB-C, and a power inverter, 120 volts, 400 watts, max. So somewhat usable there for a power inverter. Now it is a three prong, just like you'd find in your house. And a significant hump back here. And that's where the, the limitation comes in this truck is, is the, uh, uh, the, the cargo space back here. So uh, these seats lift up. So when we lift this seat up, it is once again secured. So there's a strap here. Uh, just pull on that and you can lift up the whole seat. And it does lock in place. Not completely out of the way though. And then you have some under seat storage. But you notice there's no flat surface to put anything. So if you had like a large box or something, you can't really put it in here as easy as other vehicles. And there's some tools for the spare tire there. And press this strap here, or pull this strap. And you release the back. And this is where you'll find uh, the jack for the spare tire, which is located back here, but also the su subwoofer as well. It sounds really good. It's amazing what they did with that little subwoofer back here. And there's the anchors for the uh, for the car seat as well. There's a sliding rear glass, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, it has a kind of like a shark fin slash mast antenna here there in the center and a third brake light and uh, bed lights up here as well and there's the sliding glass this is all privacy glass back here uh, there's also a step side on both sides uh, so you just step right there and lift up and you can access the bed pretty easy i like it so really really good spot to put it really because uh, you can also step on the, the bumper back here so it gives you all that that space around there there's parking sensors back here. And really like the camera location. Right here in the center. It's in a high position, higher anyway, than a lot of other vehicles have them too low. And uh, so yeah, it's integrated into the vehicle and all that stuff as well. There's also a light that shines here. Um, of course, that's the handle. But it has the Ranger and Boss back here. Now it's a combination of LED and standard bulbs for the tail lights. And I'll show this in the night video, but it does have the zone lighting as well. It's pretty interesting. It, I mean, you can't really show it during the day, so that's why I do have the night video. So it has the upgraded uh, towing package here with the four and seven way outlets here. I like the way it's above the bumper. So there we go. So you can easily access it and it stays relatively clean. Tailgate, you just release it and it has a soft landing, which is nice. And it has a shock that's easy to change right here. So that's what's keeping it from slamming down. And it's very easy to lift up. So very easy. 
Now it's uh, intended to use this tailgate, which everybody does, as a little workbench. Uh, so it has the measurements here from zero to 50 inches. It also have pla has places for putting a clamp. So if you need a clamp here, you can. Um, so it's too thick to put a clamp here. So it has a little spot there to go into here and here, which is nice. And as you can feel, it's kind of reinforced in there as well. This one has the spray in bed liner. It also has this bed extender. Uh, so you can basically flip this out. You can take it out if you don't want to use it, but you can flip it over this way when you need to use it like so. It goes over the bed like that. So you can utilize some more of the bed space. If you had like big bulky items or whatever and you need to just kind of have it extend over the bed. So basically you take these straps right here and you put them in right here where the, the tailgate would actually latch to close and you just press down on it. Just kind of latch it in place. Same thing here on the right side. Just kind of grab it and push down on it. it. Takes a little bit of force to, there we go, force it in place. So now this is attached to the tailgate. So if this lifts up, the whole tailgate has to lift up. And to release it, you just reach under here, just like you would lower the tailgate and pull that and it pops it loose. And then you can flip this back. Now, if you want to take it out, um, you just basically uh, lift it up about right there like a three-quarter angle and then you can pull it out of its uh, place there if you need to now the bed has um, fixed tie downs here in the front so you can see they're they're painted over so you can see right there there in the corners in the front there's also kind of in the middle here there's some bed lights right here as well as the bed lights up there there's also outlets over here as well so show you those so you got a 12 volt power supply and then the power inverter uh, so this is um, 400 watt max so it's just like what we saw on the inside and the the cigarette lighter style is 180 watts 12 volts and this is 120 volts of course so the length of the bed is a little bit over five feet and then with the tailgate down is a little bit over seven feet, seven feet, one inch, something like that. So this is the most important measurement to me on this type of vehicle is between the wheel wells. So see what it looks like here. Um, so yeah, it's right at, it's right at four feet. So you can pretty much wedge a <laughs> sheet of plywood back here. Uh, not much extra room, but it, it gives you the ability to do that unlike the previous models and a lot of a lot of other vehicles uh, a lot of other trucks like this where it's like you got a prop up on one side So this is uh, this is good to see this like plenty of room. I mean, that's good. It's I Don't know how they did I guess they just scaled up the whole truck. I mean, it's it's, it's about the size of an, an older f-150, you know, so they keep making it bigger so yeah, this is a more usable bed, I would say, than the previous models. So yeah, these bed extenders, I mean, once you get used to them, like with one hand, they're fairly easy to uh, to manipulate. You just grab it in the center of gravity here and just kind of line it up there and there, and then it's in place. So it's very easy to just like one-handed take it out. Just grab it in the middle here and, uh, and you're able to move it around. It's not very heavy and it's solid. And once you know what to do, it's not hard to, to move it around, take it in and out, flip it and all that stuff. The fuel door is here on the driver's side. And it is a just capless design. Now it says you can put regular fuel in there. Um, so I guess they design it that way. I mean, usually small engines with a turbocharger, I usually put premium, but, um, but they apparently designed it to use regular gas. Let's go ahead and start it up. Press and hold the brake and press this button over here to start it up. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat and it snaps in place. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, large footrest, all plenty of room in here. Let's take a look under the hood. To raise the hood, there's a latch a little bit to the left of center, just right in here. You reach in, move it to the left and lift up on the hood. Now it does require a prop to hold it up. It's not very heavy hood for the size. It's probably aluminum. Uh, there's the prop there and it swings up and you just put it right where that arrow is pointing. So there's the insulation under the hood. 
There's also seals all around, front, sides, back, all that stuff. Insulated battery, which is easy to get to. And of course, this is a rear wheel drive truck, <laughs> like almost all of them, except for the Ridgeline. So the engine is oriented this way with the transmission back this way. And the turbo is over here on the exhaust side. There's some heat shielding. Uh, the firewall is completely uh, heat shielded and insulated as well. There's the intake side. Pretty good amount of room in here as well. Not, it's not overly cramped. Doesn't have a huge plastic cover over the engine. That's it. That's surprising. You can actually see the coil packs and different things. The blind spot indicator is here on the side mirror right there to illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. The driver's door is basically just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. Right next to the door lock controls the three presets for the power seat. Power windows are here and it's one touch up and down. And they're just regular glass, no lamination or anything. But it is a quiet vehicle, so I'm surprised they're not laminated actually. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at the back glass. You do have to hold these. And they go all the way down. Side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. You can power fold the side mirrors by pressing that button. Power fold them out. And then you can um, turn this off if you don't want the kids playing with the power windows back there. You can turn them, you can cut them off. <laughs> All right, so basically the driver's seat has the same functionality. You can raise, lower, tilt, move back and forth here and here. And then you have the two-way lumbar adjustment. So there's no special features for the driver. Now it does have a heated steering wheel, so that's special, I guess. Heated seats as well. And yeah, these are very comfortable seats. It has some bolsters, but not overly tight or anything like that. Not squeezing you. Okay, to the left of the steering column, uh, you have some controls here. So there's the cargo lights, which also turn on the some of the zone lighting as well around the vehicle. And then you have the headlight switch, so it's off, parking, automatic, and then headlights on. And then you have the dimmer switch for the interior gauges, and then you press this button here for the fog lights. There's also a tilt and telescoping steering column that you can lock in place here. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall, and I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. And it's actually much further back than I would need to drive. I would really need to pull it up three or four inches or so at least in order to drive safely and press the pedals and everything. So if you're over six feet tall, you should have no problem driving this vehicle. And there's quite a bit of a height adjustment too. So you can go way down to the floor and you could bring it up really high because there's a lot of headroom here. So tall person, short person should have no problem uh, finding a, a perfect position in this vehicle with all the adjustments and the room that you have. Uh, there's lots of room here on the left and right. Uh, this is kind of tapered out, so this is all comfortable. Uh, the footrest here on the left side is perfect. It's, I've got a large foot and no problem with, you know, driving it. Steering wheel. Uh, the Ford does a great job of making a very comfortable steering wheel. It has a good thickness. It has a little bit of a rubbery feel to where it's not too hard. It's soft, comfortable. They make one of the most comfortable steering wheels, really, um, just out of their normal vehicles anyway. So here on the steering wheel, there is here on the left side, you can see at the bottom is separated from the top and on the right side at the bottom is separated from the top so this is the volume for the radio the voice recognition uh, this is to answer a phone call and hang up and then this is to change to the track so this is for your radio here at the bottom up here is for the cruise control so you press this one button it turns it on and sets it at the same time and then once it's set uh, you can raise or lower the speed cancel and resume uh, set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Also take, turn on or off the lane keep assist system, which works fairly well. Now it does have a speed limiter as well. So if you want to have a speed limit, you can have that if you like. So it limits it to whatever the speed limit sign is. And then if it goes over that, it'll let you know. Here on the right side uh, is these, this back button, arrows, and this little pages button right here corresponds with the screen. We'll get to that in a second. The windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. Turn signals here on the left side. Also the headlight dimmer switch as well. So this screen is, basically the gauges are a big screen. And so we can, so right now it's showing a um, one of the different views. So it has a digital speedometer, has a digital 
tachometer, but it's visually, it has this visual uh, bar there as well. And that's the same thing with the speedometer. As you drive, it'll have a little bar as well as the, the, the digits there. Um, so it does have what your radio is doing, outside temperature, what direction the vehicle's facing. You have some information here in the center, which is customizable. Uh, this is fixed, which is your fuel gauge and the miles to empty. Uh, this is also fixed here where you have the temperature gauge and you, the last speed limit sign that was passed and the status of the lane keep assist system and the data for cruise, cruise control is like visually represented right there. Okay, so I'm just going to use these button here. There's up, down, there's back, and then the pages button. And then it press in right here for OK. So I'm going to use those buttons. And first of all, I'm going to go up and down to show you this is part of a, a menu system. So it starts off here at the top with a comm screen. And if you just leave the comm screen there, it just looks like this. So it makes everything kind of kind of minimize. Uh, but if you scroll down, it goes to the fuel economy, and then it goes back to the normal view. The next one will be your trip one. Trip two, you can reset those independently. It gives you your time, average miles per hour, average miles per gallon, and the miles traveled. The next one will be your tire pressure off-road status. So this, this one actually gives you the, the status of the four-wheel drive system, the steering angle, so I could turn that, the steering angle will be up there, plus your pitch and roll will also be there. Now the next one is the pitch and roll specifically, so it's a little bit larger and you can have a larger view on what's going on that on with this, but it doesn't show you um, the status of the four-wheel drive system. It does show your steering angle as well. So scrolling down again, uh, this is where you can configure your view and basically take off screens. Uh, so if you want to uncheck some of these, I think it's seven that you can have. I'm not sure why it's not unlimited, but it has a limit on what you can have there. All right, now if we hit the pages button, then it pulls up this menu. And this is what we're looking at was my view. You can specifically go into the trip and fuel and also has a seat belt status as well here. Off-road information here, so you can go pitch and roll. Off-road status, so basically the screens we saw before. Towing, this is towing specific. Shows information about the trailer lights. You do have the ability to check the trailer lights and there's a whole checklist on the other screen, I'll show you that in a second. They're really handy. Uh, navigation, this is where you can just choose a previous destination that's, or certain things. It doesn't show the actual map here. Status of the phone, whatever your radio is doing. And then you can go into settings here and then vehicle maintenance. So it'll show you when it's time to change the oil, that kind of stuff. But if you go into the settings here, then you can configure gauges. You can also have, I'll show you actually, let's go into that. Show selectable gauges. So right here you can see at the top, it'll pop up two more gauges and you can select what you want there. So right now there's boost and then there is oil pressure. So left side, if we want to change that, there's the different options here. So you can see it's oil pressure. We can change it to transmission temperature for towing, that kind of stuff. Secondary speedometer is basically kilometers per hour. So it'll show miles and kilometers uh, if you need that. And then you can have the um, little indicator that for turn by turn direction here. But as, once again, it doesn't show the map. All right, let's go back here. Up to the top to my view and that's where we started right there so it's kind of a quick rundown of what the screens all about it has a lot of information you can go in there and set up the way you want you don't have to scroll through and do any of that stuff you can just set it up with the way you want and leave it alone but uh, but it's there if you need it all right there's the trailer brake gain control I really like the way these these vents look they can have a really cool design if you can see that and the way you open them and adjust them is neat but yeah they look really neat okay so it has this like the little um, little spot right here kind of flat I guess you could put something there uh, occasionally I can set my phone up there for whatever reason I need to get a better signal or whatever but it's not really I wouldn't put it up there while driving really okay so here's this screen and here's the navigation map so let me make sure the wind isn't blowing on the camera here. Uh, but you see these, these buttons here are very important. So you have this home button, 
and then the settings, and then camera. So those are the ones you're going to use regularly. You also have these buttons down here. So while we're in the map screen here, um, if I hit the home, it just pops this down and we can select what we want. We can also select down here as well. So this is the navigation. This is what we're looking at now, the navigation. There's the map there. See what it looks like. This is the radio. Let me see what that looks like. It says AM, FM, satellite radio. You can make adjustments and everything as well. There's your different phones. Navigation, we saw that. This is the audio. So if you have a device playing audio that's separate from the radio, it'll appear here. The next one is the trailer. Uh, so you can set up towing. You have different profiles here, so you have to add a trailer uh, to use the pro um, the, the, tro the the pro system for backing up to the trailer, basically. Uh, and then I really like this checklist here. So it tells you to connect it, connect electrical connections, cross connect safety chains, uh, connect emergency breakaway switch, ensure lamps function correctly, and you have a trailer light check, raise tongue jack. Remove wheel locks, adjust mirrors, and adjust the trailer brake ga uh, controller gain setting. And it's pretty cool having a little checklist there. Could come in handy. And there's your, your settings there. Okay, so we saw the home. We saw these buttons right here. You notice in the home it also has the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, it has a full owner's manual, which is very handy. I really like that. It also has a sketch. So you can hit hit that button, and basically you can make a note, you know, notes. There you go, you make a note, you can change the color if you want. You extend this out, and then you hit the check mark to save it. Or the X to, to get rid of it, or you go back, you can erase, that kind of stuff. And then you have your saved ones right here. that's pretty cool and the owner's manual searchable it's really fantastic um, when you need it now this one right here the settings the settings are quite extensive so you have the controls here with a comm screen which looks like this I like the way it shows the date and everything um, and you have the sound controls for the radio which sounds really good a lot of bass you have a phone list here, driver assistance, a whole bunch of stuff there, vehicle, a whole bunch of stuff, general, which is, has a lot of vehicle stuff inside the general stuff, including the ambient lighting, which for some reason is way down here and not under lighting under the vehicle. Uh, and then you have connectivity here, software updates, Ford assistance, Zone lighting, which is fantastic. I'll show you that in the night video. Amazon Alexa information here. You can get started on that, which I'm not. It also has a valet mode as well. So yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of settings there. Uh, and then the last button here at the top is the the camera system. And you can actually view the camera while you're driving uh, in certain views. So right now it's showing the top down view, and it shows the front view. When I put it in reverse it's going to go to the rear view with the active guidelines. So as I turn the steering wheel, it'll show the active guidelines there. Really nice, high clarity, good visuals, uh, good location for the camera, that kind of stuff. And I like the way you can have the center line, you can back up to the trailer. But you can press this button here, and you can get different views. So this would be your parking sensors. This is a super wide view. And then this is the back up to the trailer view, like right there really nice and then if you hit that button then it looks it gives you guidance when you're backing up it basically um, you can see on the sides of the vehicle basically so if we're in park we can hit this button and when you see the front view the front wide view and then the sides of the vehicle and we can also look at the trailer if we need to but while we're driving we can also uh, pull up this for dr different driving modes. Basically, you can keep an eye on your trailers is the main thing. 
while you're driving. You can also see how centered you are in the lane. That's pretty interesting. So down here is the climate control. You can set the temperature for the driver, the passenger. You can expand this and it gives you more information where you want the air to blow. You can have a dual zone or you can have it um, or you can have it sync together. So right now it's synced together. But if I hit dual, then it will be separate temperatures. Let me turn that off. Fan speed pops up here. Heated seat, heated steering wheel, controls are here. And then heated seat for the passenger. Front and rear defrosters as well. You have an automatic mode, which you can adjust high, medium, and low automatic. Go ahead and turn the fan down a little bit. But yeah, pretty straightforward as far as controlling it. And then you have some redundant buttons down here for the temperature, for the driver and passenger, fan speed, front and rear defrosters, there's a volume for the radio, four-way flashers, and recirculate the air. There is a wireless charger here and also a USB port, USB-A and USB-C. And a little storage cubby right in here. It has a little rubberized floor. Now when I put my cell phone in here, it does have the case and it does charge. So I put it in there, lay it flat, and there's no light or anything. It just there's a little indicator right up here that pops up. Very subtle to let you know that it's charging. Uh, so that's the only way you know. Like at first when I put it in there, I was like, how do I know it's charging or not? But figured out this a little teeny weeny little indicator there on the screen all right so there's the cup holders here there's little, little arms there spring loaded rubber bottom as well and it's all open in the middle and here's the shifter it took a little getting used to um, the button to release the shifter is here on the front not on the side uh, a lot of times I press here on the side and then move it but this one is in the front so I have to like I, it's a weird way of, of getting used to it because I, I, I just want to press these buttons all the time you know so I just basically started pressing here and then toggling it back because it it pivots you know it doesn't like slide it just pivots it electronically uh, moves so it's not like a it's not like there's a cable attached or anything so I'm gonna put it in reverse like so parking sensors camera pops up all that stuff and then there's neutral and then there's drive and then there is a manual mode here, so you can press that and change the gears manually if you like with the plus and minuses. Electronic parking brake, when you lift it up, it engages the rear wheels and it'll pop up and tell you that it's on now. Hold the brake and press down to release it. Here's the four-wheel drive, uh, drive modes. So it has two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, and four-wheel drive low. You also have the trailer, pro trailer assist uh, system that you can press that button and but you have to add a trailer you have to set up a trailer which I do not have set up a trailer and Ford has some pretty good videos on how um, how that works okay so it has the idle stop which you can turn off here um, it has the park assist system which you press that and it'll step you through you know parking and actually turn the steering wheel and help you align it and all that stuff um, and then you have the rear differential lock and then traction control off. Default is on. If you need to spin tires, you're stuck or whatever, then you can turn it off here. The armrest is very, very soft, comfortable, and pretty good size. You might be able to share it with the passenger if you feel like it. And when you release it, it lifts up and it doesn't slap back down. It kind of has a little bit of a spring, spring loaded. Goes up there. There's a little tray here at the top. I got my business cards in there. Um, but it is hard plastic. So whatever you put in there, it might slide around. Yeah, hard plastic, and so yeah. All right, and then this is the junk drawer of the vehicle, basically. <laughs> has a 12 volt power supply there. It is has a little immo immobilizer sensor right here. So if the key fob battery goes bad and you get in the vehicle and you need to drive, you can just set the key, the fob there, and it'll sense the key and let, allow you to start the vehicle. There's also a little cover right here uh, that you can take off if you need to manually, like tow the vehicle, you need to manually um, put the transmission in neutral. Uh, so it's something that, you know, tow truck operators and stuff would use that. But yeah, it's uh, since this is an electronic shifter, um, you will need to, you know, use that to actually, you know, force the system into neutral for whatever reason, if the battery's dead or whatever. There's also 
places for wires to go in and out of this compartment here and here. There's an auto dim rear view mirror. And also you have these lights up here. Individual tap lights. You could turn on all the interior lights with that switch. All off or have them turn on with the door by putting it in that center position there. Uh, this is for the rear sliding glass. I'll show you that in a second. And then there is a place to put your shades. A nice soft felt lining uh, on the inside as well. And there is a vinyl wrapped, same color as the headliner, uh, vinyl wrapped visors here. There's a clip, mirror with lights. There's also the home link garage door opener control here. And it also slides out. So you can slide it over here. That's very good coverage. So looking at the visibility, not I mean the headrest getting away a little bit, but it's not really a big deal. It's pretty typical as far as the visibility back here. You have pillars, you got headrest to look around. It's not really a big deal. Haven't had any problems driving this truck, changing lanes, backing out of parking spaces. It has a great camera system, has parking sensors, all that stuff to help out as well. But let's go ahead and look at that sliding, that power sliding window back there. It's pretty cool. The B&O sound system does sound really good. Uh, it has a lot of adjustments as well. Like it gives you the, the normal treble, mid-range and bass, but they're very sensitive. So you can really fine tune it. So if you want a lot of bass, it can definitely add a lot of bass. Uh, same thing with the mid-range and the treble. Now right in the middle, it still has a little bit excess bass, I think, um, but you can bring it down very easy. You can, of course, you can you have the balance and fade and all that stuff as well. But yeah, that's it's a, a really good. Depends on what you play through it, but uh, but yeah, I thought that was really neat. The the sound system when I first started listening to it, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Um, but yeah, as far as the comfort of the vehicle, it's it's fine. I mean, it's not like you know super huge space, but uh, for what it is, it's actually pretty well designed because this is kind of dished out this way and everything. The shifter took a little bit of time to get used to because it basically just rocks back and forth. And these buttons here, like typically these type of shifters, you press on here on the side to change it, but this is the, to change through the gears. So the button here in the front, um, you basically press that without pressing these buttons. And then you can just basically rock it back. So yeah, it gets, you know, once I got used to it, it's fine, but it's a little bit different. And this one has the four cylinder. You can get an upgraded six cylinder, but this is the four cylinder with a turbo, which is very impressive. Now the fuel economy is not all that impressive. Uh, I've been getting about 21, 22, uh, but as far as the actual driving experience, acceleration, power, all that stuff has been great. With the 10 speed automatic, it's just, it's a, it's a really good combination. And it has a very traditional Ranger feel to it, uh, but it's not bouncy. Now, there was another one that I drove that was a few years ago. It was like excessively bouncy. And I think it was because of, I don't know exactly what the cause was, but it was just too bouncy and it was a little bit nauseating. And this one's actually fine. Um, hadn't had any problem with the bounciness or anything like that. It's very solid and, you know, rides really well for a truck. And it delivers the power, you know, very responsive uh, with the power. There's a little bit of a tiny bit of a lag with the turbo system, but it's not really a big deal. It's not like, uh, I mean, all engines have to rev up to get in that, that range in which is where the power is located, you know, the RPM range. Uh, the cruise control, I mean, it has the lane keep assist, assist system and it does a pretty good job. It doesn't have the sensors in the steering wheel though, so you kind of have to jiggle the steering wheel sometimes. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. It, it's not as bad as some other vehicles where you're constantly of, you know fighting against you or you know making you move the steering wheel even though your hands are on the wheel you know it it doesn't sense that but this one's fine it, it, there's just every once in a while you have to just kind of shake the steering wheel just let the system know that you're holding it so 
So I'm just gonna quickly accelerate just so you can see what it's like. Yeah, when you really press the accelerator for it from a standstill, you can feel the diminishing returns there with the four cylinder and everything. But normal uh, RPM range when you're driving and you need to accelerate, merge, whatever, pass, uh, it feels more responsive and, and uh, you know, for a four cylinder, it's, it's actually pretty good. So that acceleration there was basically barely pushing the accelerator. You know, it doesn't, you don't, if you really press the accelerator too hard, you can feel like it's, it's just going past the RPMs, which is very effective and efficient. So this one, you just barely hit the accelerator and you just hold it there and it, and it accelerates almost as fast. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really well done with the, the lower RPMs which is what you want uh, with the torque and everything. At higher speeds, there's very little outside, outside noise. You have a little tiny bit of road noise, a little tiny bit of wind noise. Everything's kind of kept out as far as the noise level. It's uh, it's pretty well done. Now I guess it depends on what kind of tires you have. If you have more of an aggressive tire, it, might, it makes more road noise. Uh, but as it is with the, the, this setup right here, is actually pretty good as far as the the ride quality for a truck and the the noise level and the Ojus overall comfort and visibility. It's actually a pleasure to drive this truck.